Uh, in this video, I'm going to go through AQA AS level chemistry paper, paper two. This is the uh, June 2017 paper, and this is the second half of the paper. I covered the first half in, in, a, in an earlier video. Okay. Right. Complete the mechanism for the conversion of two methyl cyclohexanol uh, into one methyl cyclohexene via carbocation D by drawing uh, the structure and all the missing curly arrows. Okay. So the first step in dehydration of an alcohol is for the um, uh, the, the the oxygen on the alcohol to be protonated by the catalyst. So I should draw that from the lone pair onto the hydrogen. Okay. And they're going to be forming a bond. So now we have got uh, this intermediate. We've got a positive charge on the oxygen, which makes it easier for the water to leave. Okay, and we're actually drawing the hydrogen on that one. Okay, so the water then leaves as a um, and leaves a carbocation. So the pair of electrons in that bond go on to there, and we're going to get uh, an H2O molecule coming off there. And we're left with the carbocation and the carbocation then the pair of electrons in we lose the pair of electrons in that bond they go on to there to form the pi bond and we've got our product so that is all four marks there okay 7.2 draw the structure of a different cyclic alkene formed from carbocation d right now what could happen there is i'll just rub out this last bit in, uh, you lose the the hydrogen on the neighboring carbon atom so we lost it from that you know from this carbon atom here but we could also you lose it from that one okay so we're going to lose it from that one instead so i'm going to draw the hydrogen on there and the pair of electrons is going to go in there and we're going to get uh, instead of that one we're going to get the the double bond in a different position we're going to get it there that's the other alkene that we could get. Okay, carbocation D can undergo undergo a type of reaction called a re rearrangement, which you know you're not expected to know about. Uh, but they're just telling you to form carbocation E. In this reaction, a hydrogen atom and, a, and its bonding pair of electrons move from carbon A to B, as shown in Figure Two. Okay. Use your knowledge of carbocation to explain where this re rearrangement takes place. Well, if you look at this carbocation here, the carbocation D, this is a secondary carbocation because the carbon with the positive charges is bonded to two others. Whereas the one in carbocation E, that is a tertiary. You've got three carbons bonded to the carbon with the positive charge, tertiary carbocation. Uh, now that is more stable than the, than the than the secondary, and the reason for that is uh, alkyl groups tend to push a bit of negative charge away into a carbocation. That's what you need to say. And you've got three uh, alkyl groups there, whereas with this one, you and the secondary, you've only got two alkyl groups. Okay, so um, I think one one mark for saying. Uh, one's a secondary, one's a tertiary, and the other mark for explaining why the tertiary is more stable. As a result of the rearrangement in 7.3, a third alkene is formed. Uh, draw the structure of this alkene. So we're going to have a different one. Right, so let's have a look at this, um, this, this carbocation here. Right, now we're going to remove, in the previous example, we removed, um, we removed the hydrogen from um, this carbon uh to make the double bond there okay but we want a different product so in this case we can remove the hydrogen from the from this carbon which is next door to the positive charge so and then you're going to end up with a double bond there so the answer is that is the the other carbocation you can get is that sorry the other alkene you can get is that All right that's the answer to that bit there Okay, that's quite a tricky question, I think, that one. All right. Six mark question here. Okay, cyclohexene is prepared by dehydration of cyclohexanol using concentrated phosphoric acid. There's the structure of phosphoric acid. Identify the 
the factors that influence the boiling points of each of the compounds in the reaction mixture and state how and explain why cyclohexene can be separated. Okay, so they've all got different boiling points. And uh, let's look at let's look at the, the things we've got in the reaction mixture. We have got cyclohexanol, the, the, the reactant. We're going to have some cyclohexene, the product, and we're going to have phosphoric acid here. Okay, now. Uh, they've got different boiling points, so we need to think about the intermolecular forces in each one okay, uh, that each molecule can form. Right, cyclohexanol can form H-bonds. And that's because you've got a hydrogen which is attached to a very electronegative oxygen, so that makes that very delta positive. And of course, that can then interact with a lone pair on another cyclohexanol molecule. Now you can form hydrogen bonds, and uh, they're the strongest kind of in intermolecular forces. So this one, the cyclohexanol, will probably have a highish uh, boiling point. Cyclohexene, this one here, will have a lower boiling point. Because you can't form hydrogen bonds there. There's no hydrogen attached, attached to oxygen. Uh, and there's not the, the only kind of intermolecular forces you're going to get there are van der Waals forces. Uh, which are which are weaker than hydrogen bonds, so it's going to have a lower boiling point. Now the phosphoric acid um, that can that form hydrogen bonds. It can. It's a liquid, and you can get hydrogen bonds between phosphoric acid molecules. I've just drawn one of the um, OH groups on the on the phosphorus there, so that will have a hydrogen is attached to an oxygen, making it pretty delta positive, and so that can form hydrogen bonds to lone pairs on other oxygens in the phosphoric acid, you know, whether the OH oxygen or whether this uh, uh, double bonded oxygen. Right, so you can get H bonds in that. So that's going to have a higher boiling point. So that means that cyclohexene, the product here, has got a lower boiling point than the other two. Uh, and so that is going to boil off first. And so you can collect it by fractional distillation. Uh, that is actually practical, required practical 5A. So um, uh, you, you actually do that. Um, dehydration of cyclohexanol to make cyclohexene. Uh, so they quite often ask about required practicals in these papers. Okay, that's it for six marks. If you look at the mark scheme, that's all you've got to say really. Okay. Um, right, draw the skeletal formula of 3-methylbutanol. Right, so it's sometimes a good idea just to draw the non-skeletal. So 3-methyl, you're going to have a CH3 on that one. So it's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4. And you're going to have the aldehyde there. And you're going to have the methyl group on carbon number 3, which is there. Um, by the way, some people draw the aldehydes skeletally. They actually draw the hydrogen in there. So that's kind of optional. They allow you to put it in or not put it in. Okay, draw the displayed formula this time of C5H11Br. That is the major product of the reaction of 2-methylbutuene. All right, so let's draw 2-methylbutuene. Right, I'm going to draw it. The 2-methylbutuene. So we want a double bond there. And we want a CH3 on there. Um, right. Uh, now, hydrogen bromide, how's that going to react with that? Okay. So the, we've got a delta positive on the hydrogen. Yeah, the lone pair, the pi electrons come onto the hydrogen. So the hydrogen could stick onto the blue carbon or onto the green carbon. Let's draw it sticking onto the blue carbon. Um, so it's stuck on there. Now that means we are going to be left with a positive charge on this carbon. This is a secondary carbocation. And I think we'll see with the other one, if it sticks onto the other carbon, you're going to get a tertiary carbocation. So that is going to be the favoured carbocation to form. So let's draw the other one. Um, 
that's the cover cut in now. And the bromine is, so the hydrogen is the new hydrogen stuck there. And the, brom, the bromide ion is now going to react with that there. That was, a, this was a tertiary carbocation. The bromine stuck on there. This is the major product. This is the one we want. We don't want that other one. Uh, well, I've got to be careful now because it did say in the question, displayed formula. And that means you've got to draw every bond. Okay, so uh, if I drew that, I wouldn't get the mark. So displayed formula, you've got to show. Right, so we've got four carbons. We've got got to draw all the hydrogens in uh, br there that is what you should draw okay 8.3 uh, this is a strange question um, thermal cracking of hydrocarbons produces molecules that are attacked Right, so thermal cracking gives us, thermal gives us mostly alkene. So that's one thing you need to know, isn't it? Uh, and they are attacked by electrophiles, okay, because they have regions of high electron density. Draw the structure of one of these molecules that contains four carbon atoms. So you just got to draw an alkene with four carbons in it. So you could have but one in, or you could have but two in, or you could have uh, methyl propene okay any of those right and I should put hydrogens on there right uh, now about polymers chloroethene can be polymerized to form polychloroethene okay so there we go um, and you can see that the repeating unit is that uh, chloroethene has got a melting point of minus 154 degrees C. PVC melts at over 100. Explain why PVC melts at a higher temperature, right? Uh, because I'd be tempted just to talk about van der Waals forces rather than dipole dipoles here. Uh, the van der Waals forces are larger in the polymer because the, it's a larger molecule. It's got more electrons more points of contact okay um so i would just write that right 9.2 okay this structure is a molecule use a plasticizer deduce the number of hydrogens in this molecule is plenty okay so what we can do to save a bit of time here is um there's, there's obviously a line of symmetry down there Okay, so we can just count the hydrogens on one side and then double it. So I've got three there, two, two, two. Let's see, I've got three there. I've got two hydrogens there. And I've got one hydrogen there. I've got two there. Uh, I've got none on, on the, there was a carbon L carbon one there. I've got, there's, so there's none there, there's none there, and we've got one there, and we've got one there. Okay, so ones, we've got three times one. Uh, we have got one, two, three, four, five, five times two, and two times three. Okay, so that's three plus 10, 13 plus six, that's 19, multiplied by two, because we've only done half the molecule, that is 38 hydrogens. Okay. Uh, I would sort of write on the, on the paper when you do that, because if you just do it in your head, it's very easy to not count one of them or something. Okay. Uh, use your understanding of the properties of PVC to explain whether you would expect to find a plasticizer in the PVC used to insulate electrical cables. Well, a plasticizer, that reduces the strength of the van der Waals forces between... Um, between the polymer chip polymer chains which makes it more flexible uh, which is you would want that in wires because you want the wires to be bendy you don't want the, the, them to be rigid okay so right uh, now a section of the polymer polychloro 
polychloroprene. This shown below. This draw the displayed formula of the repeating unit. Now you can draw the repeating unit wherever you like, but, but I'm going to start off here, I think. And now I'll keep going. And then when I get to there, then that's when it starts re repeating itself. So I've got one, two, three, four carbons there. So I'm going to draw one, two, three, four. The first one, right, will, is going to have there's a double bond there. It's got a chlorine attached to it. So it won't have any hydrogens. This one will have one hydrogen. This one will have two hydrogens. And carbon number four, that's going to have two hydrogens. And then that's there. So that is our repeating unit. Um, and you could, you could start wherever you like there. But that's what the way I've done it. Okay, question 10. All right, now we're on to the multiple choice questions. Okay, what is the burette reading uh, here? Right, it's just over 24. I thought to me looks like 24.3 and a bit, 24.35. But that's not down there. But we do have 24.30. That is got to be the answer they require. <coughs> uh, I think they, the, the, the obvious mistake there is to say, say it's like, 25.7 right you're reading the burette the wrong way around okay uh number 11 All right uh so a volumetric flask and was used to prepare a solution and the okay so here each reading from the balance has an uncertainty of that we've got two so we'll calculate the percentage uncertainty in, in the mass well what is the mass first of all the mass we've got to do that minus 4.8 which gives us 5.65 grams and what's the uncertainty right it's we make two mass readings so it's double that so it's going to be 0 0.01 so the percentage error is 0 0.01 over 5.65 multiplied by 100 that works out to be 0.18 percent it's that one there okay number 12 okay <clears throat> infrared spectrum which compound produces this spectrum right so we can ignore all of this stuff because that's the fingerprint region and this is, you probably know that this is CH, which is not very helpful because everything's got a CH in it. But this peak here is going to be pretty useful in determining what it is. That looks very much like a carbonyl. Okay. It's, it's just over 1700. Okay. Um, and it's there. Right. Now it's just a little bit too high for the carbon carbon okay that that you could be forgiven for thinking is that but it's just a little bit too high uh, also <coughs> it, it uh, the carbon i ones tend to be deeper peaks than the alkene peaks as well so i have no hesitation saying that's a carbonyl so the only carbonyl compound we've got there and we've got butanone okay all right ethanol got, got an oh in it which can't be that pentuene's got carbon carbon double bond why can't it be propanoic acid? Well, if it was propanoic acid, you'd have um, this uh, alcohol OH peak over here. It's very characteristic. It's very broad, be like that there. So propanoic acid would look like that with the carbonyl peak. So that is definitely butanone. Right, the bond angle around the oxygen atom in ethanol. Okay, so let's think about... Um, We've got that and the is bonded to a carbon. Now oxygen has always got eight electrons in its outer shell. It's got two bonding pairs there. So that means it must have two lone pairs. Okay. So now you so you've got four pairs all together. Uh, if you have four pairs, you get a tetrahedral shape. So methane is tetrahedral, you know, you get the bond angle is 109.5. But we haven't got, uh, we've got to get rid of that. If we, if it's NH3, we've got one lone pair. That pushes the bond angle down to 107.5. But here we've got oxygen there, which has actually got two lone pairs. So we'll get rid of that. And that pushes the, the two lone pairs, pushes the bond angle even more. 
104.5 is usually the figure quoted there. Uh, that is our answer. Right, which is compound is a structural isomer of Z but 2 ene Well, E but 2 ene isn't a structural isomer, that's a stereo isomer. So we've, that one's wrong. Um, this is going to have the formula C4H8. Butane is going to be C4H10. It's saturated, so it's not that. Cyclobutane, well, that could be, that's going to be C4H8. Okay. Uh, so that looks like our right answer. Just check this one. Methyl but two, and that's got five carbons in it. Yeah, it's going to be four with a branch on it. So it's not D. So C is the right answer there. And uh, okay, C four H eight for cyclobutane. Right onto free radical substitution mechanism. Which which one is a propagation step? Now a propagation step requires a free radical to react with something that's not a free radical, right? So we can forget about that one because there's no free radicals at all in that. B is wrong, that's a termination step because you've got two free radicals coming together to form something that's not a free radical. So it's gotta be either C or D. Now we don't get hydrogen free radicals formed in this. Um, it's the correct answer is this one here, where a chlorine uh, reacts with this free radical and it regenerates another chlorine free radical, which then does its own another propagation. D is the answer there. Okay, which compound has the fastest rate of reaction with potassium cyanide to form propane nitrile? So what kind of reaction is this? They are all, uh, it is a nucleophilic substitution reaction. So I'm going to put a... Um, uh, there's a delta positive on that carbon, okay, with a bromine, with the, with, right. Now, which one reacts the fastest? Uh, it's when the, when the halogen atom is iodine, because the carbon iodine bond is the weakest, and that is what controls the rate of reaction, that how quickly that bond is broken. So the answer is D. And don't forget the cyanide, of course, is, that's a nucleophile that's going to attack that, and then that bond's going to break. Okay, which alcohol can be oxidized by acidified potassium dichromate? So that means it's got to be a primary or a secondary, but cannot be dehydrated by heating with concentrated sulfuric acid. Now, this is a very common question and they ask it every other paper or so, right? What kind of an alcohol can't be dehydrated? Well, let's just think, when we dehydrate an alcohol, we remove Uh, an OH from the carbon, from one, and we remove a hydrogen from the carbon next door to give you water, and then we form a double bond there. That's what happens during dehydration. So dehydration cannot occur if this carbon here doesn't have any hydrogens, okay, to remove. So we replace that with CH3 groups. That can't be dehydrated. Uh, can it be oxidized? Yes, it can, because that carbon is uh, the green carbon. That is a, uh, it's only attached to one of the carbon, so it is actually a primary alcohol, so it can be oxidized. So it's going to be something like that, and I bet that that's what it is, okay? So what is that? That's propen, that's 2,2-dimethyl propen 1 or 2,2-dimethyl, that's what it is there. It's that one. Okay, that is the right answer. So just to, bit quickly if you look at the other ones right this one is uh that one is a secondary alcohol you can dehydrate it and so you can dehydrate the other ones um i think two three dimethylbutan two oh uh that's a tertiary alcohol notice it let's just see yeah Two, three dimethylbutan two oil is a tertiary alcohol. You can't oxidize that one. Okay, so that's why it can't be that. Uh, but you could actually dehydrate it, couldn't you? Yeah. Okay. Question 17, 18. Right. How many structural isomers are there with the molecular formula C3H6BRCL? So that's saturated. There's no double bonds in it. Uh, when you've got three carbons, you can't have a branch. So, right. 
let's see how many variations you can have with the with the things on the same carbon. So you could have bromine and chlorine on the same carbon there. That's one. And you could also have them on the middle carbon. So that's and obviously you can't go on this one because it's the same as the first one. Right, so you can have that. Now let's see what, how many how many possibilities with different um, how many possibilities with different well they're on different carbons. Okay, so we could have um, bromine on one and chlorine on two, or we could swap that around. So we've got uh, bromine on that one and chlorine on that one, or we could have them where you've got. Uh, bromine on the end and chlorine on the end. Now, if you swap them around, it makes no difference. So the answer, we've got five structures there. B is the answer to that one. Okay, which sample contains the most molecules? Okay. Right, so 2.1 times 10 to the 22, we've got the number of molecules there. B, how many molecules have we got there? Well, how many moles of oxygen we've got? We've got one divided by the the MR of oxygen, which is 32, one over 32 times six times 10 to the 23. I'm just six point, I'm gonna just round that up. And this won't make any difference. Um, right, so that is going to give us, um, right, so one over 32. That's 1.8 seven times 10 to the 22. So that's not as many. Right. Uh, this many moles of ethane, so that's going to be 0 0.03. Um, so just 0 0.03 times 10 to the 23. Times, I'll just do that. 0 0.03 times 6 times 10 to the 23. That gives us 1.8 times 10 to the 22, so that's less. Let's do this hydrogen one now. 65 milligrams, okay, what mass of hydrogen is that? That's 0 0.065 grams. So the moles of hydrogen is equal to the mass, 0 0.065, over the MR of hydrogen H2, so that's 2. 0 0.065 divided by 2. That's 0 0.0325. Now, multiplied by 10 to the 6 times 10 to the 23 to give us the number of molecules. That's 1.95 times 10 to the 22. So this one is biggest. A is the answer there. Okay. Right. Uh, number 20. Which compound forms a molecular ion with a different precise so molecular mass? So we're talking um, high resolution mass spectroscopy here. And this relies on the fact that, you know, we say oxygen, well, we say oxygen is, uh, is 16, but in actual fact, it's, it's something like 15 point something, nine, something or other. Okay. So it's a little bit different. Hydrogen isn't quite one. It's one point something, something. Yes, yeah, it's, it's different. So uh, they will have, they will have, so let's see, this one is C4H, butanone is C4H8O. Uh, cyclobutanol, that's also C4H8O. Uh, dimethylpropane, well, that's got no oxygens in it, so that's going to be different. Dimethylpropane is C4, sorry, C5H, uh, and it's saturated 12. And methylpropanol, well, that is going to be also that C4H8O. So A, B, and D are all identical at high resolution, but this one will be different. It hasn't got any oxygen in it, so it's not going to be exactly um, 72, which is the MR of all of them. It will be it will be a little bit different. These will A, B, and C will have an identical MR around about 72, but C will be different. There's uh, there's no oxygen in there. So that's the answer to that one. Right. 21. Okay, this is um, an equilibrium reaction. 
hydrogen can be produced by this reaction. Okay, and they want us to work out Kc. And they tell us, so I've drawn a little table here. We start off with 4.2 moles of carbon monoxide and two moles of hydro of water, sorry. And uh, we haven't got any carbon, none of that at that the start. At equilibrium, we form 1.6 moles of hydrogen. So that means we must have also formed 1.6 moles of carbon dioxide. Also, it means if we took to form 1.6 moles of hydrogen, we must have used up 1.6 of that and 1.6 of that. So how much of them have we got left over then? We have got 4.2 minus 1.6 is 2.6 of that and 0.4 of that. Okay, that's the equilibrium moles. Really, we should do equilibrium concentration. Equilibrium concentration. So we should divide those by V. And they don't tell us what V is, but we don't need to know what V is because this is an unusual situation where we've got the same number of moles on both sides of the equation. So that means those Vs are going to cancel out. So Kc is going to be equal to the concentration of CO2 times H2 over CO times H2O. So put our numbers in there. We have got 1.6 over V times 1.6 over V divided by 2.6 over V times 0.4 over V. All of those Vs are going to cancel out. Um, that is going to give us a value of Kc and it won't have any units of 2.46, which is D. Right, 22. Uh, a sample of two mole per decimeter cubed acid, and we've got a volume of 100 centimeters cubed. What volume of water should be added to dilute it to a concentration of that? So I'm going to do it this way. What is the dilution factor? Well, we started off with two, and we wanted to go down to 1.5. So that is equal to 1.33 recurring. Okay, that's the dilution factor. We, So we need to increase the volume by a factor of that. So the original volume is 100. So final volume we want is 100 multiplied by 1.33. That's equal to 133. But we don't need to add that much water uh, because we've already had 100. So we need to add 133 minus 100, which is 33 centimeters cubed, 33.3 B. OK. 23 okay this is a bit of a tricky one okay so we've got two seal flasks with the same volume I think they've got the same volume and it tells us they've got the same temperature and the same pressure okay and we've got this many moles of methane in one flask okay now not always pv is equal to nrt so n is equal to uh, pv over rt now that's the, let's say that's the N of the methane. And this is the N, the number of moles of the, of the flask in B. That's also going to be PV RT. Now, what can we say about those? Well, we've got the same pressure, the same volume, the same temperature, and R is a constant. So that means we've got the N has got to be the same in both flasks. We've got the same number of moles in each flask. So in flask B, we have that many moles of, of the other gas. And we need to work out the MR of that gas to identify the gas. So moles equal to mass over MR. MR is equal to mass over moles. In flask B, we have got 340 milligrams. That's 0.34 grams divided by the number of moles, four times 10 to the minus three. And that gives us an MR of 85. So which one of these molecules has an MR of 85? Well, HBR is easy to work. So bromine 79.9, hydrogen is one. So that's going to be 80.9. So it's not that one. Uh, phosphorus is 31 plus uh, 
Three times 17 for fluorine. I don't think that's right. That gives us 82, nearly, but not quite. Krypton, I'm not sure what that is. Uh, I think that the answer, uh, we can look at the periodic table, but I think the answer is this one because chlorine is is uh, 35.5. So we've got 71 from the chlorines plus 12 plus 2 plus 14. That's equal to 85 is the MR of that one. So the answer is A. Question 24, which I think is the last question. Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, got a sample of a chemical with this formula and showed it contained this many moles of carbon. What mass of nitrogen was present in the sample? We need to find out how many moles of nitrogen. So what is the molar ratio of carbon to nitrogen? Well, it's 22 to six. And how many moles of carbon have we got? 0 0.0195. So we're going to say the moles of nitrogen is going to be 0 0.0195 multiplied by 6 over 22. Uh, that gives us 0 0.0053 moles. So what is the mass of nitrogen? Well, uh, mass is equal to moles times MR, or well, times AR, the atomic mass of nitrogen. Uh, 0 0.0053 multiplied by 14 for nitrogen gives us 0 0.074 grams. So that is our answer. And that is the end of the paper.